Welcome to Advanced Google Session 4, Creating Quizzes Using Google Forms. Creating a quiz using Google Forms is not very difficult. Your types of questions and options are pretty much the same as you had in just creating a form. You have the short answer, where you can type one line of text. You have the paragraph type where you can use a multi-line text box for the response. Multiple choice, you can enter as many options as you wish, and you can also copy and paste. The checkbox type, you may enter as much as you wish, and they may choose as many choices as they can, as opposed to multiple choice, it's one answer. Checkbox, they have multiple answers. You have a drop-down menu option, you have a scale type where you can scale your answers saying, oh, from zero to one or for up to 10 for your scale. Or you can use things like as disagree, agree, satisfied, sometimes satisfied. That's what you can do in a linear scale. For grid type of questions, you've got a multiple choice grid and a checkbox grid where you can choose how many columns and how many rows. You also have the ability to put in a date, a time, and to upload files. So pretty much everything that is there in regular forms is there for quizzes. If you need a review of how to make the different types of quizzes, you can send me an email and I will send you a review of the basic questions in Google Forms. But this section of the course is assuming you've already know Google Forms since it is advanced and it is focusing on the quiz feature. So here we go to see the features of quizzes. These are super awesome neat features of quizzes that make it even easier for you to create a quiz. You've got answer suggestions, autocomplete answers, automatically grade checkbox and multiple grid questions, being able to give partial grades like a decimal point, providing feedback in an answer, and for students to be able to look at the total points. So let's take a look at these different features. There are a number of new special features that make quizzes even easier and more efficient. One of the features is called quiz answer suggestions. Now, in order to make this work, you have to make sure you have your form as a quiz. So make sure you are in settings that you have it, make this a quiz under quiz, that the quiz feature is turned on, not off. So what it is is, it's gonna give you, it's gonna predict answers based on your questions. Now, it also depends on the questions. If you can't say how many pieces of pizza I had for lunch, and it's gonna predict that, because Google's using artificial intelligence, and the artificial intelligence is gonna know how many pizzas you had. So a question like, what is the capital of Ohio, question mark, when you hit enter, it gives you a suggested correct answer. So you will see a suggested correct answer if the artificial intelligence knows it. So I can click Columbus and then put my other answers. Now the check mark, sorry, that's not there. That's because I did something before. So then you can go in and fill in the other answers that are incorrect. like Cleveland would be wrong, and <clears throat> Dayton, and so on and so forth. Another one, and see what it suggests. Here's, let's add another question for suggestions and see what happens. What if I said, what is, sorry, what is the, largest great lake. Okay, Lake Superior. So see, you just have to put it to Lake Superior. And sometimes it will add other ideas like 
other answers that would be suggested answers. It just depends on the question. And it would, would suggest answers that are wrong, but that would be close and would make sense. So for example, here, this is showing it's a check mark because Lake Superior is correct. This feature is called autocomplete. If you ask a question where there could be multiple answers and it knows it's going to give you a suggestion like, what day can you meet? Look what it says, add all, so I could add all the days, or I could have picked any of them. So, and notice it puts it in check that question form, because it's not a multiple choice question, I guess it's asking multiples. Now, let's see if I change it to multiple choice. You could also change it to multiple choice if you just don't want to allow one answer. So that's what autocomplete does. It will also, this feature is available in 14 different languages, which is awesome. Another feature is automatically grade checkbox or multiple choice grid questions. You know, grading quizzes can be time consuming and that's why there's a new way to automate the process. And in the checkbox grid or multiple choice grid questions, you can denote the correct answers in the answer key and completed quids are automatically assigned points based on answers. So this saves a lot of repetition. So just say if I was doing something about parts of speech. So I set it up for parts of speech and I have require response in each row. I turn that on. If I go into my answer key, I can see what everything is and I can say, oh, so jump is a noun, I mean jump is a verb, sorry, puppy is a noun, sad is an adjective, and I can give the number of points that I want for each, and it will automatically grade that, which makes it a lot easier to grade a big question such as that. Another feature is when you are grading assignments. For example, if you're grading an essay, you can now give partial points on an essay and not have to give full credit. So you can give decimal grades, which is helpful. How important feedback is to students. You can now add customized feedback in an answer if they get an answer wrong. So for example, if they end the largest lake, if they answer it incorrectly and say it's Lake Erie, or you could add answer feedback to a question for incorrect answers or correct answers. So if they get an incorrect answer, you could add a link, or you could, for example, find a YouTube movie about the Great Lakes. And just choose and make it part of the answer. So you have a choice, I'll show you that again. You can go to answer key, and I'll pick another one, so the capitals. You can go to answer key, add answer feedback, and like I said, for incorrect answers or correct answers you want, you can add a link or a YouTube video. And if the student gets the question wrong, it will give them that feedback, which I think is really awesome. The last feature I want to show you is the points. As you're creating your quiz, up in the upper right corner, it'll show you the total points assigned to the quiz. And as you add more points, this number changes. All these are six amazing new features for Google quizzes. I hope you like them as much as I do. Now we'll get into the basics of creating a quiz. Remember, I said I'm just going over some of the, the basics. I'm not going over the so this tutorial questions. will go over how you can make a Google form into a quiz. I'm not going to go into detail over each question type as this is supposed to be an advanced Google course and you are supposed to have experience with all the quiz questions. Part of the assignment will be to include each type. So please know how to make each type of question. First thing you want to do after you title your quiz is you want to go to the settings gear and under general you have some things you can decide what you want. Do you want to collect the people's email addresses? 
Uh, if you only want them to be able to respond once, like take the quiz once, check off, limit to one response, and the respondents will be required to sign into Google. If you're making a Google Forms quiz, I assume you're in a Google domain and all the people will have Google email addresses. You have the choice if you want them to edit after they submit it, which means they can change their answers. So it's up to you. And see summary charts of responses. So this is your choices of what you want the respondents to be able to do. And make sure you hit save. Do not forget to go into the quiz tab as well. Sorry, I should have done that before I hit save. Make this a quiz. And you will see it says assign point values to questions and allow auto grading. There also is another choice. When do you want to release the grade? This is under quiz options. Do you want to release it immediately after submission? That is the default or later after manual review. If you are a teacher that has multiple sections of the course and you're giving the same quiz, I would recommend you release it later after manual review because if you give them the answers right after they submit it, they could share their answers with a student who's taking the course at a later time. The other thing that you can pick is what you want the respondents to see when you give them back the quiz. Do you want them to be able to see the questions they missed, the correct answers, the point values? It's up to you. You could check or uncheck any combination. And once again, don't forget to hit save. So those are the basic settings to set up your quiz. Now let's add some questions. Okay, so what is the state bird of Ohio? Question mark. One of the features that we talked about earlier gave me the suggested answer of the cardinal. So I can put in the cardinal, there's the check mark next to it, I can say the heron, I could say the finch, and so on and so forth. I go down below where it says answer key, make sure the correct one is checked off, and I mark the points. Now I can add another question. I can add another question and I'm going to make it a short answer which is the largest great lake. When I go to the answer key, since they're not going to have the answer in front of them, they might put a couple different answers in, like Lake Superior or, sorry, my spelling, or they might just put in Superior. So you could put in as many answers as you would accept for a correct short answer, and then check off, mark all others as correct, incorrect. So if there is a variation, but it's still the correct answer, and you're using a short answer, it gives you the option. You can do <clears throat> the points right here, make it whatever you want, and you'll see at the top, it is keeping a point total. Let's take a look at what the students will see. You, of course, can give them send them the link you can also include if you want to sorry under send you can send by email a link however you want you can paste the preview link into google classroom so here's their quiz and we can put in an email address and they can i'm going to get something wrong on purpose and hopefully I can spell superior again and submit. If you allow the students to see their score immediately, this is what comes up. They can view their score. This is why if you don't want them to see their response immediately, to uncheck the box about response, the grade being released immediately under settings. Okay, so remind you, under settings, under quizzes, if you have immediately after submission, your students will see this. If you do later after manual review, they do not have the option of viewing their score. So I can go view my score and see, oh, I got this one wrong, and it gave me the correct answer, and I got this one right. Now, I'll remind you again, if you do not want your students to see the correct answers, then down under here, respondents, what they can see. 
it's up to you what they see, you have control. And those are basically the basics of creating a quiz in Google Forms. Now that you know the basics, let's go over the assignment for session four. You're going to create a self-grading quiz, use at least one of each type of questions, create an answer sheet for the question types you were able to, set up points for your questions under responses, set up an automatically grade checkbox and multiple choice grid questions, Use a YouTube video for feedback to improve understanding on at least one of your questions. You go into your quiz options under settings and pick how the grades were going to be released and what your respondents can see. That's it for session four. Feel free to connect with me through Edmodo or contact me through my email if you have any questions.